All right, Shalom. Giving all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, Bashem Rakakodash. Double honors unto the apostles and the elders of the great millstone. Peace and salutations unto the Akiam, the sincere Akiam. You know, pushing this truth through the four corners of the earth in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and their freedom to do so, now more so than ever, to the scattered, the speckled bird Israelites who be scattered among the heathen. I say Shalom. And I say Shalom unto the few and faithful Aqua, the sisters listening and learning. This is your brother Yerushalam from the GMS Prophetic Vibrations Camp. Out of Trey and the Bay, coming at you with another video. Through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, Bashem Rakakodash. Right? So, this is a continuation from the, from the video. Um, if part one of the video I made with reincarnation and regeneration is biblical. Alright, let's continue on to go through another part of the lesson, which is which hopefully through the spirit going to be ed edifying to you. You know, if not informative. Alright, so. Let's um get into it here. Uh so let's go into let's go into Matthew chapter 24 and verse 34. Alright, a few precepts here. It reads, Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Alright? So, you know, the Lord was talking about talking about the generation and saying that at that time, this is how I speaking, that should not pass until all these things be fulfilled. So basically, you know, he said he's saying that um this generation, but that generation would have died by now. But that was what 25 about what so many years ago. Alright. Over two thousand years ago. Right? So they, they would have died. So what he was talking about, he was talking about regeneration. But that same generation that I was in in that time is back here. It's the same generation as now. Same people back here in the spirit. Alright? The same people. Let's go to Mark chapter 9 and verse 1. It reads, And he said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that there be some of them that stand here, which shall not taste of death, till they have seen the kingdom of the Most High come with power. You know, and, and you know, this as when through this in part one, because all of the apostles, except all the apostles died, right? Except, you know, and they, they had violent deaths, right? Except the apostle John the Revelator. All right, who wrote Revelation, right? You know, and so so if they died now, how they weren't gonna taste that he was talking about regeneration. He wasn't talking about, you know, you know, that they wouldn't die in the flesh, the flesh would die, but the spirit, all right, will be back again. All right. You know, and um the same people that live that were living in that time in the old Roman Empire, the same people living now in the new Roman Empire in America, which is Babylon the Great, which is modern day Rome, Egypt, you know, Assyria, everything, right? They're back here. You know, they're back here. And we can see that in Revelation 1 and 7. This is Revelation 1 and 7. Again, you can see that here. Alright. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him. And they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. So, so if you said, every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, they, they which pierced him would have died, right? Because it's what, we in the year, what, um, 2021? So this will be 2,000 plus years after the death of our Lord. Alright, so how are they going to see him? Because they're going to be back here. They're back here right now, actually, in the regeneration. They're right back here. And they're going to witness the coming of Yahweh, of Yahweh Shia Mashiach. Alright, our Lord and our Savior. Alright? So the generation back here. And that's how they're going to see him. And that's just straightforward and clear. Alright? Straightforward and clear. Um, Let me see. John... 14 John 14 Yeah, well, let's precept, let's go into the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit, same Holy Spirit that the Lord sent back there, He sent back again. So that just shows nothing new under the sun because we had lost all our remembrance, all right? Because according to um, Jeremiah, you know, Jeremiah 17 and 4, you know, we, 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 lost, we, we lost our heritage, it was taken away from us for a while. But now the Lord returned it, and as He returned it, now we've turned the Holy Spirit. So this understanding came back to us. Now we can break down all the scriptures. The book is unsealed. Alright? So that's what happened. So now let's go to back to John 9 and verse 1. So we're gonna go through, give an example here with Yahweh Shai and the blind man, right? This is John 9 and 1. And as Yahweh Shai passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. 
And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, or his parents, that he was born blind? All right. So they asked him, which one sinned? You know, because they knew, they knew that um, in that time, that um, you know, the Lord, the Lord held judgment. And judgment is passed down to the or fourth generation because they, they know when to, after they die, the spirit was going up. You know, and, and it would be judged, and then after he was sent back into the fourth generation, they knew that. That's why they say, you know, if it was his parents, if it was, if it was he, well, who sinned, if he had sinned in his lifetime, or his parents, that sin, which was him in his previous, in his previous lifetimes, right? You know? And the scripture go into that and explain that. Right? And Yahweh Shai answered, Neither had this man sinned nor his parents, but that the, but that the works of the Mosai should be made manifest in him. So now let's go to the book of Ezekiel. All right. Ezekiel chapter 18 and verse 20. All right. It reads, The soul that sinneth, all right. The soul that sinneth, Ezekiel 18 and 20, shall die. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father. All right. Neither shall the father. Bear the iniquity of the son, right? The righteous of the righteous shall be upon him, and the wickedness of the wickedness shall be upon him. So this is telling you plain here that the that the sins of the father, you know, he not his father not gonna not gonna fall on his son. So between the father and son, right? The sin not gonna fall on his son from the father, and the sin of the son not gonna fall on the father. So you basically you punish for your own sin, all right? We have the curses on us, of course, according to Deuteronomy 28. Right? Because for breaking the commandments and the laws and the statutes, right? Of the most happy, our Bashim, our Shai. But in terms of our sins, our individual sins, we 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 are punished for our own sins, you know. We get judged for our own sins. Alright? That's what happens. Alright? So so that's what that's what in the regeneration, that's what he's talking about. Because when you come back, you know, you, you go up and you're judged in your spirit from your Heavenly Father. And then He sends you back and you live out your judgment judgment here on earth, under the sun, as we saw. Alright? Alright? And I was going back to Ecclesiastes 3 and verse 16, which we went over in the first part. Part 1. Alright? So, let's go to, let's go to Exodus 20 and verse 5. It says, Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, Yahweh, thy power, am a jealous power, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. So visiting the, the iniquity of the fathers upon the children, right? So this children is not talking about, it's not talking about, um, you know, you know, it's not talking about your direct son. It's talking about you coming back in your third or fourth generation, Right? Upon the children, upon unto the third or fourth generation of them that hate me. So you 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 die, you go up, you get your judgment, you come back and you serve your iniquity, you serve your judgment for your iniquity. Alright, in third or fourth generation for doing your wickedness that you've done. Alright? That's that's how it is. Now we go to Exodus 34 and verse 6. Right? And the Lord passed. Actually, let me see. Exodus 34. Let me go verse 7. Alright. Let me go verse 6. And Yahweh passed by before him and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord, power, merciful and gracious, long suffering and abundant in goodness and truth. Because this is when um the Lord allowed Moses to see his back, right? Because he couldn't see his face or he would have died. Right? Verse 7 says, Keeping mercy for thousands. Right, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, and that and that will by no means kill, clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children, and upon the children's children unto the third, and to the, and to the fourth generation. Why you third or fourth generation? Because we come back in third and fourth generation again. Right upon the children's children. All right, visiting iniquity upon the children's children. Which is when you come back. Alright? That same iniquity. Now, we're going to go to numbers. Because precept upon precept. You know, line upon line. Alright? Through that precepts I gain understanding. 
This is Numbers 14 and verse 18. It reads, The Lord is long-suffering and of great mercy, forgiving iniquity and transgression, and by no means declaring the guilty, visiting, no means clearing the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation, right? So again, precept upon precept. Now, we're going to go to, um, we're going to go to Jeremiah. So, you know, knowing, knowing that you regenerated, you know, that's why the Lord said, you know, don't fear those who, who could, who could kill the body, you know, but nobody, one who could, who could put the body and the spirit, you know, in, in the hell, just roughly paraphrasing. All right. This is Jeremiah 32 and verse 18. It reads, thou, thou showest loving kindness unto thousands and recompenses the iniquity of the fathers into the bosom of their children after them. Right? So here they see recompense it to recompense, to pay back the iniquity, which is the wickedness, the sin of the fathers into the bosom of their children after them. Right? Into the bosom of their of their children after them. So it's talking about it's not talking about the children. It's talking about the, the children's children. You no, know, and those the children's children, children. Right? Because the Lord said, you know, he doesn't punish that man for the sins of his son, nor a son for the sins of the father. All right? So, so when you come back now in the regeneration, you're going to bear that your own iniquity. All right? You bear the indignation of the Lord, the righteous indignation of the Lord. All right? And that's what we bear as men of the Lord, you know, according to Micah 7 and 9. But he's lifting us back up and giving us this truth. All right? So that's what's happening right here. All right? Into the bosom of their children after them. The great, the mighty power, the Lord, your how of hosts is his name. All right? And that's, that's what the Lord doing. We compensate the iniquity of the fathers into the bosom of their children after them. All right? Into, he would, he would have, if it was just his children, he would say, he recompensed the iniquity of the fathers into the bosom of their children. You know? But he said, after them. You know? So we're going into after them. So it's clear. All right? You know? So, you know, that, that's, how, that's how things work. Now let's go to Titus 3 and 3. Um... Titus 3 and 3 says, For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving diverse lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. But after that, the, the kindness and love of our, of our power, our Savior, toward man appeared. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, right? Because, you know, none of us are righteous. None of us are righteous. It's just filthy rags. But well, according to his mercy, his grace, right? He saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit. So the Lord, the Lord, wash us, wash us in the regeneration. Right? You know, and we went to the regeneration is renewing. Right? That's us coming back, you know, generation after generation. You know, we same spirit, you know, different body. Right? And the renewing of the Holy Spirit. Because the Lord give us give, give us back the Holy Spirit. To understand this truth. To be able to break down the scriptures. Alright. So it's a gift. You know it's a gift from the Lord. It's a gift of the word. The word of salvation. We all wish I died for. Alright. You know. We all wish I died for that. You know and we had this word. Of before time as the Lord said you know. The Lord said we had this word before time. You know because we, we were the same people. You know back there. This is the book of um, Sirach, Sirach 27, verse 9. It reads, The birds will resort unto their like, right? So will truth return unto them that practice in her, right? Because we, we practice in, in her, so the, so the truth return unto us, the Holy Spirit, there's groaning and groaning in the elect, you know, Lord will be among that number, the hopeful elect, right? So the, every bird will resort to his like, right? The bird, the bird represent the truth, right? That's the Holy Spirit, all right? You know, it resorts to like, it resorts to who? The elect, you know, the, the hopefully elect and elect, all right? So that truth will return, so the bird will return unto those, unto his like, all right? The Holy Spirit. 
it's clear. All right? You know, and as I was going through, we're talking about the chains of darkness. You know, we're talking about the slacky, the ring. You know, and, and, and let me go to that. Let me try to go back to that scripture in 2nd Esdras. 2nd Esdras chapter, I believe it's chapter, what's it, chapter 5, verse 38. Yeah, 2nd Esdras 5 and 38. I'll, I'll jump down to verse 42. Because you read this in, last, in the last part, when you have a check, part 1. Verse 2 said, and he said unto me, I will liken my judgment unto a ring. And we know the judgment of the Lord is when he's in his spirit. When we walk there, and unto a ring. You know, a ring is what a circle or like a chain. Alright? Like as there's no slackness of the last, there's no swiftness of the first. So we, we, our life is taken away when it's supposed to be taken away. Not, not, we won't, we're not here a second later. And we know come back on this earth a second earlier. Alright? So there's no swiftness of the first. So it's a circle, it's like a chain. Alright? Now, we're going to go to the book of, um, of Jude. Okay? We're going to go to the book of Jude. Jude chapter 1 and verse 4. Alright, I'm going to read from verse 4. Just so you get the understanding. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of all ordained to this condemnation. Who were before of all that alone is talk about regeneration. They were the same, the same scoffers now, the same so brothers who were formerly brothers who were in this truth with us, who drop out. You know, they did the same thing back then too. They were they were before of all ordained to this condemnation, right? Ungodly men turning the grace of our of our power into lasciviousness. And denying the only Yahweh, only Lord Yahweh, Lord Most High, of our Lord Yahweh Shai Mashiach. I will therefore put you in remembrance, right? In remembrance, we try to put you in remembrance because what the Lord said in the book of Job 8 and 8, that, that remembrance was taken away from us, right? Though ye once knew this. How did we once know this? All right? If we now learn back the truth, now, now we now getting back our heritage and the understanding of the scriptures. How did we once know this? All right? We didn't because because we in the regeneration when we were back there in that time, we had an understanding of these things, of the truth, of our Lord, right? You know, and of these 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 I don't even want to call them brothers, these guys, you know, these jakes who fell out of this thing, right? Alright? Though he once knew this, right? Because he knew this before. We were here before. How that Yahweh, the most high, Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, because it was Yahweh Shai who saved us, you know. He was in that chariot, you know, that pillar of fire by night, a pillar of smoke by day, you know. How that the Lord Yahweh Shai having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believe not. Alright? And the angels which kept not their first estate, so we, we, we had known all that before, right? The angels who kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation because we, we, you know, Lord willing, we among that number. We once, we once had celestial bodies, all right? But then we were put into these chains of darkness, these this flesh, all right? He had reserved, but, all right, let me read that over, for Jude 1 and 6. And the angels were kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, right? Where they live, the habitation and habitation going on also to the body, right? Because the body is the temple, all right? That celestial body. He had reserved in everlasting chains. And that chains goes back to 2nd Ashes 5, verse 42, into the ring. Right? Because a ring is wrong, right? It, it, it basically it just goes wrong in a cycle. Same way a chain, a chain around your neck has links, but every link's reading the next one, and it comes right back around. Alright? So he had reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. Because you know this flesh is a trip in a stone, you know, and and could be a stumbling block, right? So that's the dark that explains the darkness and the everlasting chains is us, you know, being regenerated, you know, down down the down the ages, through the ages, alright? Through the different worlds, alright? The chains of darkness. Alright. Let me see if I can go into that. If I can get anything here. Chains. Strong 
6G1199, Desmas, Desmas. Right, you change, um, me go here. Here we go. Chain. Right, a series of linked metal rings. Yeah, and here we go, rings. Linked metal rings. Right, so that even going back to the same precept, second address 5 and 42, the Lord judgment is as a ring. Right, so every ring, <laughs> you know, that ring is judgment is like on the ring. So every, at, every, at every point in, in, in that chain is a ring. Right, so you may be at one point in your chain and when you die, you go up, you get judgment and you come back as another link in that same chain lower down. Right, that same chain. Right, so it's a series of linked metal rings used for fastening or securing something. Right, so, so that going back to, that going back to the, the chains of darkness, going back to this flesh, and basically securing our spirit, you know, as a shackle, as a shackle, you know, as a bondage. It has our spirit in bondage. All right, that's why we can't truly really worship your Bashim your Shai properly because it's flesh sweeping us back, you know. But that, that just explains the whole thing, right? Right, it's a series of links, right? On that, those links represent the lifetimes that we lived, different life, life, li different lifetime. One ring, you know, will be you, when the next ring might be a son, and then and your, your grandson, and then after you may come back, right? Any third generation, fourth generation, all right, the next link. Okay, so look down here, they have something called succession. Succession. A number of people or things of a similar kind following one after the other. Alright, so there's a, there's a succession of lifetimes that we had. Alright, you know, so we, we right now we're in this, these chains of darkness, we bound, we in these, these bands or these, these, these shackles, we bound to dying and being reborn. But when your Hawashaya Mashiach comes back, that's going, all going to end. You know? You know? That's all going to end. I mean, let's go to 1 Corinthians 15 and 51. And we're going to close this off, right? 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 51. It reads, it reads, um, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. And the sleep is talking about death, you know? Death in his, in his flesh, but we shall all be changed, right, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible. So the dead going to be raised incorruptible, right? You know, regeneration, again, and we shall be changed. We sh right? So we shall be changed. For this corruptible, this flesh must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality, right? So when this corruptible shall have put on in corruption, this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? Alright? Because at the end of the day, right, you know, just how we have an immortal spirit and a, and, a, and a mortal body, you know, the Lord is going to reunite our mortal spirit back with the celestial body, with the immortal body. Alright? Oh, so the, our mortal spirit back when he mortal, so then we'll be here forever. We'll no longer be regenerating or reincarnating because we won't die. All right, I pray that this lesson has been edifying. All right, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai Bashem Rakakodash. I right? double honors unto our apostles and our elders who taught us this truth. Peace and salutations unto the Akiyam, right? Shalom and Wa Abad Babal. Shalom.